what inspired you to write your book, The Dashboard Effect, and what key takeaways can readers expect from it? Yeah. So at first, it was a, a friend who had built a very successful consultancy on uh, executive compensation. And she said, we, we've got a book. It's you know got a certain thud factor. It's the most credible brochure you can have. Just have a ghostwriter do it. Don't read ours. It's embarrassing. And uh, so we said, okay, that sounds good. Um, and it quickly became apparent that that was not going to fit with our principle of transparency, that we needed to actually say something that was important to us and meaningful and that we thought could really help. It took about three years to write as a result, a certain amount of perfectionism in there. I don't know if you'd written a book, but it was our first and, and it, it, it must have proofread it a thousand times. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was the uh, to be real the genesis, the key takeaways are understanding from industry leaders and business experts and not not the guys at Blue Margin, but those that really have authority uh, explaining how having dashboard scorecards, clear visibility into the numbers is the difference maker when it comes to profit margin, when it comes to growth, when it comes to company culture, um, when it comes to employee retention. We had one of our clients, we, we after we finished putting tools into their tech's hands. They had thousands of people running around in trucks doing installs and maintenance and had a massive turnover. It reduced the turnover by 52%, not because they threatened people or added more um, salary or benefits, but because they gave them ownership and a, a scoreboard. You know, they're, they're athletes playing on the field with no scoreboard. They're going to yeah. wander off, and they were. So it, it's that kind of insight into here's the power of data and uh, here's how you can get there without it seeming like this is going to take, you know, three years and a million dollars. It's not that at all anymore. In fact, it's rapidly progressing past that. We're pretty soon, we're seeing previews now, uh, the executives are going to be able to say, you know, show me my most at-risk clients. Show me the, the one factor that causes clients to churn or to uh, retain and get really good analysis in visual analytics and then be able to adjust with that natural language query. So some good things are, are coming up. Well, John, what would you say for companies considering implementing business intelligence solutions? Um, what advice would you give them to ensure success? Yeah. One of the keys that comes up almost every time is getting buy-in from stakeholders. Uh, it's difficult to get momentum without at least one, if not three strong executives saying, yeah, this, you know, if I had this kind of clarity and I could sit at my desk and understand what's happening and not just have a thousand meetings and read a hundred spreadsheets, uh, that would change everything. So getting them a quick win inside of four weeks in a visual representation of some key area of the business and starting the foundation for building a platform that is a living, growing part of their business. So companies view sales and HR and finance and, and other things as sort of core pillars of running a business. They really need to look at data as a, a, one of those pillars that's not a set it and forget it install, yeah. but is a, a living, evolving part of their business. Uh, without it, it'd be like saying, we're going to put our, our budgeting and our forecasting in place and we'll revisit in 10 years. You don't do yeah. that. It's a constant right. a constant uh, tool that you use to gauge and to direct. So you can get that quick win and at the same time, take a key data source, an ERP or a, or a Salesforce or what have you, very quickly in a matter of a week or two, load it into a data lake and build a quick um, uh, data model on top of that so that it makes sense to humans and give access to analysts to go even deeper and begin to produce some things, even if they're off, even if the data is incomplete or the metrics aren't perfectly defined, it drives that process. Invariably, people say, oh my gosh, if you can do that, now I got it. So, so that quick win and starting the foundation. Got it. So John, this next question may be uh, closely related to the previous question and maybe, maybe the same answer. But lastly, if you distill today's conversation, what is your golden nugget of advice for our listeners based on, on this conversation today? What's in a, maybe in a sentence or two to put you on the spot, what would you like sure, to leave sure. with our listeners? What's that little nugget of advice? Yeah, it would be uh, rather than ha having an acute 
lack of visibility issue come up and then addressing that, reaching into the oncoming tide of data in your business and trying to pull out a point in time insight to step back and say, we need to make this part of what we can do regularly and is constantly updated and automated. So uh, let's address that acute pain point, but let's put in the first building block of a foundation without slowing ourselves down, without, you know, saying in, in 10 weeks, you're going to have some visibility, but immediately get some insight and think of it more programmatically or more platform wise, rather than over and over and over uh, doing quick tactical fixes. 